Joe Biden has won the American presidential election. Transitioning from one president to the next comes with a lot of work. You know, we all patiently wait for Inauguration Day every four or eight years. But for the new president-elect, it comes with many layers of duties and responsibilities before he or she can take the oath of office. This is transitioning from 45 to 46. So, when does this transition process begin? Well, actually, members from both the Biden campaign and the Trump campaign have been preparing this potential transition since May of this year. And it's actually required by the Presidential Transition Act of 1963. Also required by federal law, the current standing president must put together a White House Transition Coordination Council to assist in the transition process. For President-elect Biden, he has already begun putting together a task force to help fight coronavirus. On page four, uh, this is U.S. daily deaths. The numbers, of course, are different for communities of color. It is crisis that the testing is very much lagging. People on the ground are, are quite desperate for additional testing equipment. I'm, I'm gonna take you through two, two quick topics, masks on page 11, and then after that, a quick word on schools. If 95% of Americans wore masks, we would reduce deaths in half between now and December 1, which means that we would save about 70,000 lives. So, sounds like everything is under control. What's the concern? Well, initially, before the election was called, there was concern that if the race was close enough and the numbers didn't favor 45, then the results would be contested by his team, lawsuits would file in, and there would be a recount. <laughs> what does that look like? Well, actually it depends on the state. 20 states and the District of Columbia have provisions for recounts if the difference in vote totals is below a certain threshold, which is usually no more than 1%. Georgia, which was a close state and still actually hasn't even been called yet by any major news network, Joe Biden has a 0.2% lead right now, and we're headed for a recount. This process could take until the end of the month. And the Secretary of State just came out today saying that the vote recount would be by hand. So who knows how long that could take. Wisconsin is another close state attempting to do a recount with a margin of error equally less than 1%. Let's give a wide hypothetical. Let's say for the states where recounts are handled in court and these court hearings take us past January 20th. What happens? Does Donald Trump stay president? Does it get handed over to Mike Pence, our current vice president and vampire himself? Actually, neither is the case. If this scenario were to happen, then the current Speaker of the House, in this case, Nancy Pelosi, would be the sitting president until the trial had concluded. Wow, just bask in the moment of Mitch McConnell under a Nancy Pelosi presidency. Oh God, wow, that is <laughs> truly something. <sighs> I needed that. So here's the deal. To prove voter fraud from the states, a substantial amount of evidence has to be presented and so far, no evidence exists of voter fraud in any state in support of a Joe Biden victory. Yeah, but we'll keep waiting. Like, I got, I got time. Some of you have the question, what if January 20th comes around and 45 just refuses to leave? Now, 
If you mean, what if he wraps the Biden camp up in so much litigation that a clear winner cannot be determined? Well, then Congress can step in and determine the winner. However, if you mean, what if he literally just won't leave his chair? Well, let's be honest, they could send a 12 year old in there and just drag his ass out. Maybe we'll send Baron in. It'll probably be the first time he's seen his dad in a really long time. Never forget that the Secret Service is there to protect the presidency. If Joe Biden is the new president, well, 45 is a threat to that office. Why is any of this important if Joe Biden's just going to win anyway? Well, for starters, the well being of the American people should never be a competition between the two candidates. This transition is so important because it gives the president elect the resources and all the tools possible to execute their vision and bring forth their campaign promises. And also get updated on national security threats and shit that only the president is privy to. And truly with the current pandemic, it's already difficult enough to transition office space for staff in a safe and distant way. I mean, not to mention the limited capacity of some of these facilities currently and the complication that creates for the transition of administrators. Look, the point is Joe Biden's campaign has enough work to do without the needless trials and recounts and lawsuits that are happening. This is effectively slowing down the process of this transition and it will effectively harm the American people. Just to be clear, and I wanna be really clear about this, this is not about Donald Trump giving a concession speech. No president by law has to give one. But the custom, the customary action of a peaceful transition of power isn't just smoke and mirrors. It's a message to the American people. Now, the message could use some work because for a very long time, it's only been a certain subset of Americans that were included in that message. But the message to the American people is that our government, regardless of party or political ideology, is going to peacefully work together to create the best administration for the people. But you don't have to do it. You don't have to do a lot of things. But again, he doesn't have to do it. Donald Trump doesn't have to concede for Joe Biden to become the next president. And at this point, both the popular vote and the electoral college could really give a shit.